Love, king of New York bars, a place where you can still talk. This is what author Frank McCourt wrote on the dust jacket of his Pulitzer Prize winning memoir, Angela's Ashes. McCourt was writing about his favorite tavern, a place he'd been frequenting since he first started teaching English literature at a high school over on 16th Street. He was talking about Old Town Bar on East 18th Street in New York City. What makes someone so sentimental about a bar? I mean, after all, an author only has so much room on the dust jacket of a book. To really understand why McCourt was so enamored of this place, you'd have to go here yourself. But in the absence of that, we'll try our best to help you understand by first getting the history of Old Town Bar from the owner, Gerard Meeker. And this building was built in 1892, and, and it was originally uh, a German uh, uh, place called V Meisters. And, uh, and then they, they ran it for about 20 years. That makes this place not only old, but a New York landmark. Imagine all that it's seen, all that's been through this place. What's more is that the date puts Old Town Bar into a small clique of the city's most historical watering holes that deserve respect, especially considering they made it through the darkest years of our nation's history, Prohibition. During the Prohibition, it, it was called Craig's Restaurant, and so uh, and Tammany Hall was a couple blocks away from here in New York, didn't really, um, didn't really um, accept prohibition, you know, it was a lot of German, Irish, and New York in those days, and, and their tradition was, uh, was uh, not to, um, to abide by prohibition. Disguising themselves as Craig's Restaurant, the bar went about business as usual, taking advantage of a special feature built into their booths. And so, like, these booths, the booth you're sitting in pulls out, and they, they would put the liquor underneath there during that time for the faux raids that they would have. Yeah. So that was kind of like, actually, if you see a movie that was with Jackie Gleason and Art Carney, they shot it here, and they, it was about Prohibition, and they, they used that element in, in, the, in the movie. Do you remember the name of the movie? Izzy and Mo, it was Izzy called. Mo, okay. It was directed by uh, the old uh, child actor Jackie Cooper. Jackie but Cooper. that was like 1985. It was the last thing that Jackie Gleason did, but really? they kind of incorporated a little of that into that movie. Yeah. So the, 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 the These boots, yeah. The, 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 top thing comes out and they oh, would supposedly gotcha. put the, the booze thing. underneath there, gotcha. you know, so that's, or at least that we were told. But everybody, everybody knew about it back then, right? Yeah, they knew about New York. I mean, it was more of the Bible Belt states that yeah. took that seriously and the, those women battle axes, you know, would come yeah. around, you know, and but the, you know, people didn't, uh, uh, you know, and, and, you know, so there was communion wine and other stuff. There was ways of getting around yeah. it. So thanks to some simple hiding places, Craig's Restaurant survived Prohibition and then reopened. So then after Prohibition, it opened as the old town. You know, it was okay. the Loden family who were German-Americans. Klaus, Klaus Loden was the owner, and, um, and Klaus lived to about 1952. And, um, and it was, you know, specialized in German food, basically, in this area. I mean, there was a lot of German. Luchau's is a very famous place a couple of blocks from here. Um, and uh, so Klaus died in 52, and then he, um, his son Henry took, took it over. But this neighborhood started to decline between the 50s and, and 60s, and, and um, New York declined in the 60s. Yeah. Like so many taverns do, Old Town fell on hard times when the dynamics of their neighborhood and the city itself changed. The regular, homogenized crowd of German-Americans moved out of the area. But as luck would have it, Gerard's father who hadn't had a whole lot of success with bars in Brooklyn, made Old Town his final stand, and it proved to be his biggest payoff. My father kind of took it over, you know, with Henry, and Henry was not a great, uh, he, yeah, he was more interested in playing bridge than running the bar, you know, so, uh, so my father kind of had experience running bars uh, in Brooklyn, you know, where he made his mistakes, so when he was in Manhattan, he was ready for uh, the big time, so he, started opening up at nights and you know and then this area started to uh, regenerate and uh, and then uh, it started to uh, advance from there. Right. And so, that, so here you are. So here we are. Yeah. And so here they are, loved by fans throughout New York, but especially, as McCord implied, a particular literary crowd. We celebrate writers. I mean my father kind of had a little writing interest. I mean, I was always an editor in high school and college of paper, so I, I mean, I, I admire writers and, and, uh, and we've been fortunate to have some, you know, very interesting writers. I mean, Brian Friel, a great Irish playwright, and came in one time with Seamus Heaney, the great Irish poet, and, and you know, we, 
and we even get English writers, Nick Hornby and, and, uh, and people of that sort. So they feel comfortable here because it's, 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 it's a place that celebrates conversation. Celebrating conversation, what a wonderful way to describe this place. No loud music, no blaring TVs, no cell phones, just conversation. And speaking of conversation, let's talk about their urinals. As you look around, you'll see posters celebrating them. You'll even see a letter from New York City Mayor Bloomberg tactfully posted next to the bathrooms congratulating them for their urinals. Yeah, the urinals, I mean, were put in in uh, 1910. Actually, you look at the top of them, it says uh, that they were uh, patented in 1910 and, and Hinsdale, you know, and so, and I always saw that November 1st, 1910. So I said, you know, November um, 1st, 2010, we're going to have a party. I mean, one fellow, Steve Russian, who was a Sports Illustrated writer, always, not always, but often mentioned our urinals. If he built the perfect ballpark, he would include the urinals from the old town in it. So, so we invited Steve to give a, you know, a talk on, on the urinals, and, and he did it quite well. And then we, we have a lot of political people that come in here. So we have, uh, you, know, uh, you know, we have Mayor Bloomberg uh, write a, uh, a letter, and uh, he didn't write it, but somebody wrote it for him, but it was a clever letter. Right, and, I saw that. and so we had a, um, we had quite an extravaganza, you yeah. know, for, uh, and it was, a, fortunately it was a Monday night, so it was like maybe even better. Oh, that's good. To a dead night into a very active night. Birthday party for the urinals. Yeah, <laughs> so. Well, I have to say, I really like where you, uh, where you hung the mayor. Mayor's letter. I thought that was, yeah. that was great. You go to other places, and they're framed they're right at the entrance. You got yours tacked next to the toilet. Yeah, that's yeah. great. That's fun. So why did Frank McCourt gush about a bar on the dust jacket of his best-selling book? It's because the bar was Old Town Bar, a place where you can get lost in 55 feet of mahogany and marble, where you can sit and be alone with your thoughts amongst a hundred other people. Or it's a place where you can talk to the attorney on one side or the retired cop on the other, and you can talk without shouting. Simply put, Old Town Bar is one of those places they don't make anymore. Often imitated, but never, ever duplicated. A place that increasingly only exists in the pages of books by talented writers like McCord himself.